Got my rusty 1988 Chevy G20 camper van. It's really rusty, it come from Ohio. And then it stayed at Clearwater Beach down at Island Estates 24 seven in the saltwater air. Well, the guy lived on a sailboat. It's a G20 model, it's three quarter ton. The builder put a toilet in it with a holding tank and was able to title it as a motor home from brand new. So the insurance is only $62.50 every six months instead of $600 a year as a Chevy van. That's a really good deal for the insurance. The van drinks so much gas at the 305 with a TH400 turbo transmission. I wish I had a 700 R4 overdrive transmission. It might only get 13 miles a gallon on the highway. My friend has the same van in a 350 with an overdrive. He gets 18 on the highway. It's been a really good van for me, other than using gas. The transmission did have a problem where it stopped wanting to shift in the third gear. And I took it to several transmission places. They wanted anywhere from 1200 to 2500 bucks to rebuild it. A place in Largo, Florida called Trico Transmissions. I've known them for over 40 years, ever since I first came to Florida. Um, Steve, the owner, said that if you leave it for a week, we'll test it and um, diagnose it and let you know how much. So I took it there, and on the seventh day they called back. They said they could rebuild it for, um, I think it was $1,500, $1,600 to rebuild it, or they could fix it, just fix it for $120. I figured they just fixed it. So I said, I'll take it fixed for $120. It ended up being a, um, a governor that goes into the side of the transmission. It's got nylon splines and the splines were all melted. They showed me it. And they um, replaced the vacuum lines on the engine too. Some of them were cracked. Now it runs really good. Before when I give it the gas, it hardly go. Now it just takes off and goes. You gotta be light footed with it. It's a nice van for camping in. I really like that. Those aluminum slot wheels, I had them ever since 1981. I bought them used. I actually got ripped off because I paid 80 bucks for four of them back then. In 1975, they were only 19.99 a piece, brand new. I've had those wheels since 1981, 40-some years. They've been on probably a dozen Chevy vans that I had. That's all I like to drive is the Chevy vans. The guy tinted those windows and he, he did bubbles. I guess, like they say, you get what you pay for. He did it for half the price of a, another tinner. He left bubbles in the tent. He said the sun will take the bubbles away and it never did. And the tent he used wasn't even limo. I told him I wanted the darkest limo on the back windows, the sides. I should have had him show me the box. The box was inside the house. He did it at his house. You get what you're paid for. Those um, bumpers came in um, painted. And I replaced them with chrome bumpers, front and rear. What else did I do to that? I can't think of anything else. I, oh, they had a roof air conditioner on the roof and I took it off and put that vent on there. And I took the ugly awning off. They had a really ugly awning. I don't like that at all. I like that it has tilt wheel and it has um, roll up windows on the drivers and passengers doors. I really like that. I wish the passenger side um, 
rear doors were pop out. The two on the passenger side and the two on the rear, but they're not pop out. It's been a really good van. I saved a lot of money um, on insurance, but it drinks a lot of gas. Maybe I can get a picture of that rust. It came from Ohio. Look at this. It's bigger than your arm. It's crazy. That's a big hole. It doesn't bother me though. Look, you can see in the hole. The rust doesn't bother me. It's on the door too. It's on the other door just like that too. Yeah, the rust doesn't bother me because it runs good. I take it camping. It's better than sleeping in a tent any day. Those wild boars smell food in a tent and they'll rip right through the tent. No animal could get in the van. I feel safe sleeping in there all locked in. I've taken it to Daytona the bike week about maybe three times, maybe more. It didn't do that bad on gas going across the I-4 going 55. I think it got 16. When I go camping, I pull a trailer with the ATV. That's why it only gets 13. In the city, it drinks a lot of gas. I kind of think that it always did this when I go to Daytona. The gas gauge won't move until you've gone 100 miles. And then it moves quick. I was hoping it had a small 22-gallon tank, but I think it has a... 33 gallon fuel tank. It might need a power steering gearbox. It's got some play in the steering when you drive it. You gotta go back and forth with the steering wheel like you're driving a boat. You have to get used to it. Another thing about it, um, front brakes the front pulls when you put the brakes on it pulls and I put brand new calipers I had the neighbor put brand new calipers on both sides and it still pulls brand new calipers and brand new brakes right now the exhaust is out on it but it's not really loud I went to um what was it Midas Midas wanted right under a thousand dollars. I think it was nine fifty to to put um a new pipe where it comes. They'd hook onto the pipe that comes down off the motor and put a new muffler and a new um tailpipe. It's got a, a newer tailpipe on it now, but they wanted nine fifty. I went to my regular muffler guy. He said 150, but you have to leave it. He never made me leave my cards there before. I think he doesn't want me videoing anymore. When he put the muffler on the Toyota motorhome, it was up on the rack and I was shooting video of it. I don't know. Right now I need tires really bad. The tires are over five years old. The back ones might be seven. They're all dry rotted. Walmart wouldn't sell me tires because one of the wheels is missing a lug nut. It's an egg corn shank lug nut. It's hard to find. I would like some BF Goodrich tires. I already looked at them at um, Sam's Club. They're 550 installed for four. I think it was a 60,000 mile tire. Maybe it was 65,000. For 200 more, I could have Michelin. I'd rather have the BF Goodridge. I had BF Goodridge on a diesel Mercedes before. And they, they lasted so long, I had them on three different diesel Mercedes. Just kept them on the same rims and swapped them car to car when I'd sell the car. They would never wear out. They were BF Goodridge Advantage. 
That's why I'd like BF Goodrich again. They'd look really good. My lug nuts are guaranteed for um, life not to rust. I got them from Summit Racing. And now they've rusted. They're trying to say they can't find them in the system because it, it's been so long. But they did find the locking lugs. I got two sets of locking lugs on each wheel. Eight locking lugs total. And they replaced them. They sent them for free. They said just throw the old ones out. But I want the acorn lug nuts replaced. I paid for them and they're guaranteed. Maybe I'll call that company Gorilla and see what they say. How could you have a lug nut guaranteed not to rust? They're gonna rust. It'd be nice if they'd send me all new lug nuts. They sent me new wheel locks. What else about the van? I really like the van, it just drinks so much gas. I've had um, probably over a dozen, probably 15 Chevy vans. They made a G10, half ton, G20, three quarter ton, and a G31 ton. I really wish this van had a 4.3 V6 with a 700 R4 automatic overdrive transmission. It would get 22 easy on the highway. I had a Chevy, or it was a GMC Shorty, and it had a 4.3. It was an 89, and it got 26 miles a gallon all the time on the highway with the AC off. It did that good, because they had an automatic overdrive transmission. I think that one had electronic overdrive transmission. This one has a trailer hitch on it so I can pull the trailer. What else does it need? Oh, the windshield started leaking up top. See where I put that flex seal? And the flex seal did work. It was leaking right up here. They had problems with them rusting. The top's rusting out along here. Mine's not that bad. But that seal right where that rubber gasket it was, was leaking. And it would leak all over the driver's captain's chair. And you go to drive it and the chair would be all wet. It was crazy. I figured out what it was. And I put that flex seal in there. I think there might be a hole underneath that... Um, a hole where it's getting through. I don't like it to be wet in there. The Kemper builder put a toilet in there with a holding tank, a two burner stove, a sink, a bed. They put a coach battery in there. They put that roof air conditioner on there. It's got a little luggage rack on the back and a TV antenna. I hate that big window right behind the driver's door. I don't like that at all. If that ever got broke, how would you ever replace it? I like the small, long one. I put E3 spark plugs in the van. My mechanic Jose did. And he compression test all the cylinders when it was, um, when I first got the van. I think I've had the fan 5,000, or five years now. And I've only driven it 8,000 miles. That's not many at all. My friend Lucky Dog drives his Chevy van every day of the week. He doesn't care how much um, gas his uses. He goes to yard sales in it and brings back stuff from the yard sales to resell. He makes money with his van. I just use mine to go camping in. That grill used to be gray. I repainted that grill in white. It looks a lot better in white. The grill and the headlight bezels and the metal behind the grill, I repainted in gloss white. 
I'm filming in a Sony 4K HDR AX33 camcorder. Sony calls it a handycam. It should be a pretty good video.